we're going to be looking at the orbit, the planets and satellites. The Sun exerts a gravitational force on the planets that make them orbit around the Sun. If we assume that the orbit is circular, then we can say the gravitational force is providing a centripetal force. So the centripetal force is equal to mv squared divided by r, where m is the mass of the planet, v is the average speed of the planet, and r is the orbital radius, that is the distance between the centre of masses of the sun and the planet, minus g m m divided by r squared is the gravitational force from Newton's law of gravitation where g is the universal gravitational constant and capital M is the mass of the sun. The minus sign indicates that the force is towards the centre of mass of the sun. We can use these equations to determine the orbital period of a planet orbiting the sun. So we're going to go through the proof now. Little m is common on both sides of the equation and also an r term is common on both sides so they can both cancel. So we're left with v squared equals g capital M divided by r. It's important to note that we're left with the mass of the sun and that's because the mass of the planet little m has cancelled out here. The average speed of the planet orbiting the sun is given by this equation. The average speed is the distance travelled divided by the time taken. So the distance travelled for one complete orbit is the circumference of the orbit. So that's 2 pi r. And that's divided by the time taken, which is the time period. If we substitute this equation for v into here, we get this. We times out the brackets, so we're left with 4 pi squared r squared divided by t squared. And rearrange it to make t squared the subject, we get this. So we timed both sides by t squared. So t squared comes to the other side of the equation. We've also timed both sides by r. So you get r squared times r, which gives you the r cubed. And the r disappears on this side. And then we've divided both sides by gm. As 4 pi squared g and m are constants, then we can see that t squared is directly proportional to r cubed for planets. And this is consistent with Kepler's third law of planetary motion, which states that the squares of the orbital periods of the planets about the sun are directly proportional to the cubes of their mean distances that the planets are from the sun. Kepler discovered this law by analysing the orbits of different planets around the sun. However, he couldn't explain why t squared was directly proportional to r cubed. The reason why is from Newton's law of gravitation. And we previously showed how Newton's law of gravitation is used to prove Kepler's third law. And finally, we're going to be looking at geostationary orbits. That is, satellites that are orbiting Earth, but they are stationary relative to a fixed point on Earth. So, geostationary. To be geostationary, the satellite must move in an orbit above the Earth's equator as this is the only point on Earth that the gravitational force on the satellite will be towards the centre of mass of Earth. Also, the satellite has to have a period of rotation 
that is same as the period that the Earth rotates about its axis. So that is 24 hours. And the satellite must move in the same direction as the Earth rotates, that is from west to east. The main use of geostationary satellites is in telecommunications, that is transmitting or receiving TV and telephone signals. So a transmitter or receiver dish on Earth can be directed to a fixed point in the sky where the geostationary satellite is. That means can always transmit or receive signals between the dish on Earth and the geostationary satellite. So the dish on Earth doesn't need to change its orientation to track a satellite in the sky if the satellite was not geostationary.